prefer to isolate themselves from Africans and kept themselves in a closed community. It was this kind of isolationism that had caused the Asian expulsion from this country. Forty years after he was ousted out of power, the late Idi Amin's the economic war that saw the expulsion of Asians from the country remain one of the major highlights of the late president's economic policy. But an economic contextualization of his action by experts may surprise many. Africanization of, the, of Uganda, uh, not only the economy, but uh, also the political systems and the social systems, um, was first of all not an idea which came in 1973. It was there way before Amin came into power. It was way back uh, in 1961, there was uh, the first development plan, which was um, uh, the Obote regime inherited from the uh, departing colonial government. Um, there was a plan and, uh, to Ugandanize the uh, civil service and to Ugandanize the uh, Ugandan economy. Um, Maybe Amin did not agree with the way, the pace it took, so um, he chose to quicken it up. And um, that took away the human face of the whole program. So there were so many things Ugandans, as Ugandans were not involved in. Many people were just even beginning to come to work into the civil service. You'd find like here in Makerere, a whole faculty has just about four blacks out of a staff of 40 or staff of 30 majority of the people were foreigners. So there was that transition, but also now there was the other business side of it. And I think that's what Amin also wanted to focus on. So one of the things is known for is the economic war. He chased away the Asians and handed over the businesses to, to the Africans. Things we are still doing today, you have had the debate of asking MTN to seed shares to local people. So Amin was also exactly trying to do that. We even have a whole lot of local content and policy to have buy Uganda, build Uganda. So he was literally looking at that context. It seems then, from these analysts, that Amin was at fault with his approach and not the idea itself. The, 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 the black class did not have uh, the experience the Indians. Indians had over 100 years of experience uh, being Dukawalas. Uh, we didn't have that experience. Uh, we were basically more agrarian in the farms. You are looking at a situation where they don't have many models on how do we do it. Today we have learned that you can face it. Today we have learned that foreigners are not entirely bad to an economy. But they can come in, but encourage them to work with the locals. In some cases we even say understudy. I've seen companies in Africa which have been forced to say, you can begin with your staff, but send our staff abroad to train. After five years, let them replace yours. According to critics, Uganda economic challenges started during the reign of Idi Amin Dada, but some do not agree. That's not entirely true, because we still have so many problems today. We still have debt to deal with, we still have skills that are missing, we still have uh, hazard planning, things that don't add up. You have an infrastructure here, a piece there, and a piece here. We still have capacity of remuneration. Of, oh, these are problems of the economy remuneration and retention of staff. Now, the only thing that might change is during a minister's time, most of the people leaving the country were political, kind of what we call political refugees. Now, today, everybody is like, well, the political refugees are at home. But the economic refugees are increasing. And how was the economy then compared to now, 40 years down the road? The ownership of the economy was really within the communities. Because the economy was coffee, the economy was cotton, the economy was uh, sim sim, was sunflower, was maize. And those are things that individual beings were growing and selling through the cooperatives and the different marketing boards. So people would still get money out of their efforts. Now you have come to a situation where some people have money, but basically either through trade, some of them it is through corruption. Now you have more inequality today. We didn't have figures of then because there were no surveys being done. But you seem to have a significant inequality today that the shopkeepers who have stocked are saying people are not buying. The decay of the newly created African capitalist class um, shrunk the private sector significantly and emboldened the pri public sector. The public sector became so big because the private sector is shrinking in its uh, 
uh, in its duty to the economy. The public sector became bigger, um, conversely, it became bigger. And, uh, but it was not built to accommodate such pressure. And by 1977, things had started to collapse. It finally appears that there is now some consensus around the idea of the economic war, but what remains a matter of debate is the means that was used to justify the ends. Ismail Musa Ladu, NTV Business.